everybody! So I've always said the problem with physics is it's really simple and really boring. And by the time we come to the more complicated stuff, because we've all turned off in the early lessons, we don't really understand it. But physics is, at its basics, dead simple. And the same is true of energy. Now let me ask you a question. What is energy? And I'm willing to bet that you've got a bit of a problem answering a question like that. But to me, energy is really simple. Energy is about moving stuff through a distance at a time. It's why old Newton was so concerned with these things. Because in order to move that, of course, I must apply a force. A force is just moving something through a distance at a time that has a mass. And we can see that. There, it's got no energy. If I do that, I put energy in, the energy comes back out. If there's two things you remember, one of them is going to be e equals mc squared, good old Einstein, and the other is going to be f equals ma, Newton. f equals ma is the measure of force, which is named after Newton. And one Newton equals a kilogram meter per second squared. The reason is m mass kilogram acceleration a meter per second squared. So it is just the mass of something moved through a distance at a speed. Okay, so we now know what a force is. Energy is applying that force to move something. <laughs> and that's why the joule, which is the measure of energy, is a newton meter. Okay, so big whoop, how does all of that help us? Well, that is a section of my gutter. It's 40 centimetres in area, it's 8 metres long, so the volume of that is round about 32 litres. Water is 1 kilo per litre, so I can stick 32 kilos in that, and it is 3 metres from the ground. Turns out, here on Earth, we've got something available to us all the time, and of course, that is gravity. Now, gravity is 9.8 metres per second squared. That's the acceleration. So if I take a mass of one kilo and accelerate it by gravity, it is going to be 9.8 newtons. That is the force available in one kilogram of mass under the acceleration of Earth's gravity. Of course, in our rainwater gutter, we've got 32 uh, litres, 32 kilos of mass to drop. That gives us somewhere around about 313 newtons. Energy, joules, is just newtons metre. So we've got to drop that through 3 metres, we multiply that by 3, and we have 940 joules available to us. Now, of course, all we really need is something to take that energy and convert it. And I've got this. It's my rainwater generator that I designed on Tinkercad, and the Tinkercad files are, of course, freely available for everybody to use and see and adapt. And they can be found because there's a link in the description. If you look at that rainwater generator, you can see it's just a paddle wheel in a bit of pipe that will fit on a standard English gutter. So here's my standard bit of English guttering, and that goes in there like that, and we dump our rainwater through there to spin that paddle. Now what's good about joules is a joule is also a watt-second. So if I divide that by uh, 3,600, which is the number of seconds in an hour, then what I get is 261 milliwatt-hours available from that single rainwater gutter. Now all we've got to do is see if this works. Okay, this is Luke's hands with his sleeves rolled up and both me and him are dead, braving wet feet. But here's our rainwater, here's our generator. What you want to watch is that thing there. Now we're going to pour the water in there because this works on mass. So you wouldn't let the rainwater dribble down, use something like a bell siphon, and then when it fills, obviously, it dumps all the water down there. So watch that bit of white tape. There she blows. There she goes. <laughs> How's your hands, mate? Uh, a little bit wet. <laughs> <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> so that was kind of cool, hey? Now, we dropped it from three metres in the rainwater, and of course, if you doubled that height and took it up to the second storey, you would double the amount of energy that there is in there for the simple reason Joules is force times distance. So double the height, double the joules, double the energy. Now, of course, 
That isn't a huge amount of energy, but it still becomes viable if this bit is cheap enough so that your cost per kilowatt hour of generation is down. If you can make this bit cheap enough, then scavenging energy from rainwater, particularly in a country like England where it rains, becomes a viable option. Now, of course, we designed this thing so that we could put a PC fan on there, and then you're upcycling and recycling and reusing electronic components as well. That's got to be plus plus. Cost of this, about two pounds or so, or something like that. It wasn't great. I use skater bearings, sealed bearings would be a good idea, but that works really quite well and would be a viable way, I think, of generating the energy. But even so, calculating how much energy available to you is really easy to do if you follow what I said in the video. Of course, you won't get all of the energy out because if you remove all the energy, the water will stop flowing. And then the other thing to think about is the efficiency of this wheel. This particular wheel actually is pretty efficient, so it captures a lot of the energy of the water that's been dumped on it. But of course, you are connecting it to a generator. And if you're connecting it to a generator, generator efficiencies can vary between sort of 60 and 95%. So it can make quite an impact what generator you connect onto that to how much you're actually going to get out of it. But again, if you're spending a couple of hundred pounds on a tiny generator, it's not very cost effective. So you have to balance all of those things up. But on the whole, that's how much energy is available. And that's how to get it. And it probably is worthwhile. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.